It's been a busy month uh, this last month of August, and so it's time to do an update on the status of Solar Cycle 25. A quick summary of what's going to be coming in this video. We'll start off with talking about the sunspot number and how it's changed in the month. Then we'll talk a little bit about active regions. There's been an increase in activity in both flares and CMEs this month. And also coronal holes are important from a space weather point of view because they affect the solar wind as it reaches the Earth. Well, let's start with the sunspot number. That's the easiest quantity to understand about the sun. We have in here yellow marking the daily sunspot number, and you can see that's highly variable. In blue, we have the monthly sunspot number, which is uh, an average of each month, but it's also quite variable. You can see the spikes both up and down. And then there's the monthly smooth sunspot number, which is a important quantity used in measuring the solar cycles. The smooth sunspot number is a 13 month running average of the monthly sunspot number. And I've plotted here separately so you can see it more clearly. And it shows a very distinct smooth rise through the month of February. And you can see that it's been generally accelerating over the last few months and there's no sign of it slowing down or turning over. That would be a sign of the beginning of the maximum of this cycle, and we have seen no sign of it yet. So we're a ways away from that as yet. So getting back to our original figure, we have two models here or two predictions. One is the CM prediction, which tends to be rather conservative, and that shows a peak late next year at about 120 uh, sunspot number. However, the SC prediction, which you could consider to be the upper bound, continues going up all the way through to the end of 2023 and peaks at something like 210 or perhaps much higher. That would be an exceptionally intense sunspot cycle. Well, this is what happened to the sun in August, day by day sunspot number. You can see again, it's highly variable. The average was at about 80 and the peak value was about 135, and the lowest value was about 130. And the gray areas here are the uncertainty on those numbers. Well, how is Solar Cycle 25 progressing compared with Solar Cycle 24? The red line here is the NOAA and NASA prediction, which was at about 130 uh, sunspot number. That's somewhat higher than Solar Cycle 24. And as you can see, both in terms of the sunspot number and the F10.7 radio flux, the current cycle is well exceeding that particular forecast. The sunspot number is about 59% higher than the NOAA and NASA forecast, and the 10.7 centimeter flux is 61% higher. So if the overall cycle is about 60% higher, we should say, then that would say that solar cycle 25 would be at 216 as the peak of the cycle if this continues all the way through to 2025. And that will be one of the largest cycles on record. So let's take a look at some movies. First of all, we'll do a sunspot movie and then followed by a magnetogram movie. These are 28 day long movies. Two seconds approximately equals one day. And they're both from the SDO HMI instrument. As the movie goes through the month, you'll see that most of the activity is in the Southern Hemisphere, which is quite interesting. But right towards the end of this sequence, in the southwest, bottom right, a large sunspot group emerges, and that's the one that produces most of the flares we will talk about later. Now let's take a look at the equivalent magnetogram. Here, the strong magnetic fields are indicated by dark and light shades. You will notice that the number of 
magnetic regions is much larger than the number of sunspot regions. That's because not all magnetic regions produce a sunspot. Next we move on to active regions. This is my plot of the number of regions on the sun that produced at least one sunspot. There's a different measure of this and that's done by NOAA who numbers active regions and so I've plotted that on the same scale here and you can see both of them have a, a distinct acceleration to them although the NOAA one is far more variable because there are actually uh, smaller statistics on these numbered regions than on the uh, sunspots that I've been counting. So let's take a look at an active region movie. We're going to go to the Solar Dynamics AIA instrument this time. I'm going to look at two movies, one at 171 angstroms, which is about 500,000 degrees Kelvin. So this is in the lower corona, the cool corona. Uh, the second one is at 335 angstroms at about 2.4 million degrees Kelvin. And those show up the active regions best of all. In this first movie, we are looking at relatively cool loops, but it enables you to see the magnetic structures, how they vary in time, and also how they interconnect from one region to another. The brighter regions here, particularly the ones that are showing some major variation, are in fact the magnetic loops that sit above the sunspot regions. Next we will take a look at the number of flares and it's plain that they're becoming more numerous as we move further and further into solar cycle 25. Now, flares are classified according to three categories. C flares, which are the, about the minimum interesting size flare. There are two smaller categories, but nobody really deals with those very much. The next category up is an M flare, which is 10 times brighter than a C flare. And 10 times brighter than that is an X flare. And of course, the C flares are more numerous than the, the M flares are more numerous than the X flares. And I've color coded them here. Green are C flares, yellow are M flares, and black, which you can just see a few of them there, are X flares. We can break that down more simply by changing the uh, scale on here to a logarithmic scale, and it looks like this. 2019 was just before solar minimum, and there was just uh, about 20 or 30 C flares in that whole year. Solar cycle 20. Five started in 2020, so we started an increase of M flares as two M flares that year, and nearly 100 C flares. In 2021, we had a couple of X flares, tens of M flares, and several hundred C flares. So far this year, and I, I stress that this is so far, we've had eight X flares, about 150 M flares, and uh, well over a thousand C flares. And so we've got another several months to go, so these numbers will all increase, obviously. So let's take a look at a flare movie. We're going to go to the SDO AIA 131 Angstrom channel, which is about 10 million degrees. And what you're looking for here are bright flashes.
Flares and coronal mass ejections are related to one another in that some flares create coronal mass ejections, but also coronal mass ejections can carry on without any significant flaring. And so this is a rate of coronal mass ejections over the first two and a half years of solar cycle 25. And you can see that it's accelerating as just like the other activity indicators are. And we're getting up to nearly 150 of these events per month. So now we're going to take a look at several CME movies. First of all, we're going to start out with the SEO AIA Helium 2304 instrument, which shows many of these sorts of events that produce coronal mass ejections. You're going to be looking at filaments and prominences erupting away from the sun. That's the beginning of a coronal mass ejection. Next, we're going to be looking at the Soho Lasco C2 movie, which is the smallest and high resolution field of the Lasco coronagraph on Soho. Then we'll take a look at the combination of the C2 and the C3. The C3 is a much larger field of view, so you'll get some idea of the gigantic size of some of these coronal mass ejections. And just as an extra bonus, during the month, there was a comet that dived into the sun while we were watching it. And so you can take a look at that. It's quite a, a rare event. Here we're looking at the transition region, about 50,000 degrees or so. And we're looking for structures erupting away from the sun. As you saw one in the top left hand corner there do so. And those are the harbingers for coronal mass ejection. Now we look at the inner field of view from the Soho Coronagraph C2, and we will see the launch of some of the coronal mass ejections throughout the month. In this next sequence, I've combined the inner field of view with the outer C3 field of view in blue, which is much larger. And you can actually see how large some of these coronal mass ejections get, many times the size of the sun. And now for something completely different. Early in August, a small comet headed towards the sun. You can see it coming in here from about four o'clock in the field of view and heading straight towards the sun. Unfortunately, it doesn't survive the experience. Earlier, I mentioned coronal holes, and one of the things that coronal holes indicate are when we're near solar maximum. This is a picture of the magnetic sun over the last four solar cycles. 
and these are the dates of the maximum of those cycles. And you can see something interesting happens near both of the poles. At those times, or near those times, the poles reverse polarity, i.e. they go to zero and then start uh, accumulating the opposite polarity. This is part of the natural 22-year magnetic cycle. So when we're looking at solar maximum, we should be looking for a disappearance of the polar coronal holes. So let's see how they're doing at the moment. Here are two pictures taken in the same wavelength band from the AIA instrument with a good view of the polar coronal hole, at least the northern one. At the moment, the B angle, the tilt of the sun, is maximized to the north, so we're seeing the best northern extent of this coronal hole. And on the right, we have what it is just a couple of days ago, and on the left, we have what the same uh, instrument saw a year ago. And you can see that the coronal hole is much larger a year ago than it is now. I reckon it's shrunk by about 25%. That would say we have another two or three years before we get to maximum and that hole disappears. So what can we conclude from all of this? Solar maximum is at least two to three years away. All the activity indicators are accelerating, so activity is continuing to build. And so the sun will get more and more active over the coming years. Flares and coronal mass ejections are going to get more numerous as time goes by. So we'll get more uh, exciting events to look at. Solar cycle 25 will likely be significantly larger than solar cycle 24. And so once again, one can conclude that there is no indication that we're going into a grand solar minimum any time in the foreseeable future. If you want to be kept up to date on a more regular basis than this once a month uh, presentation that I give, I have a Twitter channel where I do daily reports on the sun, the earth and coronal mass ejections, and also any breaking space weather news like today, there is a geomagnetic storm going on, uh, quite a strong one. So uh, that was uh, advertised this morning. So you're welcome to come over to there and join the 6,000 odd people that are follow me on that. Well, thank you for watching. That's it for today. Please stay safe in the coming month and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.